Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to another sponsored UXW Bill product review. Wait a minute, no. This is not actually a product review. This is a UXW Bill sponsored product comparison. And what, will we, what we'll be doing in today's video is taking a look at the Thermal Master brand P2 thermal imaging camera, which they claim is the world's second smallest thermal camera. I wonder what the world's smallest thermal camera happens to be. We will be comparing it against the competing Kaiweetz KTI W01 thermal imager. Now the original plan for this video was actually to do a comparison with the Top Don Tools thermal imager, but there arose a technical issue that has precluded that from happening. Before we get into the actual comparison, I'd like to show you the thermal imager. We'll also hit some of the highlights on the box. And I would also like to take a moment and mention, this is, as you might have guessed from the artwork on the box, not actually a standalone device. This has to be used with some type of a phone or tablet. The version that they sent me for comparison is for Android devices. I will be talking more about that down in the video description since it's really only of peripheral importance to the main subject matter of this video. So if you're interested, you can certainly check that out. Let's go ahead and open the box and have a look at what's inside after we hit some of the highlights. Here on the side, it gives us some specifications, tells us that the maximum temperature that can be measured is either 1,112 degrees Fahrenheit or 600 degrees Celsius, says that it has a plus or minus accuracy figure of 1.5%, has a 15 times digital zoom, which is honestly probably best ignored, because all in the world that's going to do is simply crop out a smaller portion of the sensor and make it larger, without actually increasing the workable resolution of the image that you're hoping to capture. So the best thing to do would actually be to move closer to the thing that you want to measure the temperature of and profile with this camera. There's a 25 hertz frame rate, and it mentions that it consumes 0.3 watts of electrical energy, allowing for a 400 plus minute battery life. They also mention that this makes use of the Razer X patented AI image algorithm because what would a product on the market today be without artificial intelligence making an appearance somewhere? Here on the back, there's information about the product itself, what it's compatible with, the company that manufactures it, where they are located, and how you can reach out to them. They have a website, of course, they also have an email address, and finally, there is a telephone number. There are also some certification markings on the back of the product box. Let's go ahead and open the box. The cover just lifts up directly. You can take that off and set it aside. And it reveals that there are multiple items in here. We'll start with this little pocket off to the side because I think that's what they intend for you to do. And here they give you a small extension cable. This is kind of handy and you may find yourself using this rather often if you are using this with a phone or tablet that's in a case because otherwise you might not be able to plug the camera directly in. Also, if you want to put the camera inside something to take a thermal picture, this would allow you to do that. I see no reason why you could not, within reason, use a longer extension if you'd like to do so, and we might try that a little later in the video. Inside this packet, we find not only a little card with a Thermal Master logo on it, A greeting letter telling us that they appreciate our purchasing and selecting Thermal Master as your trusted companion to explore the world in thermal imaging. And then, of course, there are the instructions. Despite the size of this manual, there's actually not a whole lot to this because it's actually written in multiple languages. I will say this, at least for the English portion of the manual, which is all I can speak to, it is fairly well written. There are a couple of grammatical difficulties throughout, but nothing that would serve to make it incomprehensible or difficult to understand. So go ahead and set those things aside. And then we'll take a look at the camera itself, which is certainly wedged in here tightly enough. There's a little carabiner in here that you can use if you want to. I don't imagine I'll assign a lot of utility to that, but it's there if you would and happen to want to use it. But it comes inside this little case 
with a latch that you can push right here to open it up. And that, of course, reveals the camera itself. And the camera is definitely very small. And just to give you an idea how small it really is, I've gone ahead and placed a United States nickel and a penny here next to both the carrying case and the little camera itself. It is extremely tiny, but it does feel well made and quite solid, so I think it would hold up well over time. There's a USB-C style port protruding from the top of it. That's where you plug it in to your tablet or phone, which is what we'll do next. And here, of course, is a conveniently available Android tablet that should work well for this purpose. I just happened to grab it as I saw it wandering by. If you really happen to be curious about what it is, it's a Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 Lite. Not exactly high-end, but it should work fairly well for this purpose, and if it runs well on this, I guarantee that it will run well on any other Android device that you are likely to have at your disposal that is at least a halfway current model. Now, as previously noted, if you have a case on your tablet, you may very well find yourself unable to plug the camera directly in, and indeed, I cannot do so because the depth simply is deeper than the USB-C connector happens to reach. So we'll take our little extension cable here, we'll plug that in, then we'll plug in the other end to the waiting camera, and we'll set the camera somewhere. It actually pops up a prompt now that says, would you like to open Tempmaster to handle camera? Well, let's go ahead and do that because that is the corresponding application that goes with the Thermal Master camera. And it's not too hard to pick up and get started with it. We simply tap on the picture of the camera. It takes a moment to initialize and here in a moment we should be looking at the light fixture right above us and you can actually see already the thermal signature radiating off of all of those light bulbs up in the ceiling's light fixture that's part of the ceiling fan. For the rest of this video comparison, I've gone ahead and gone outside to capture things that are both hot and cold, and I'll be sharing some still pictures and maybe a video or two with you a little later on. But before I get into that and the rest of the comparison, I'm afraid that I may have damaged the Thermal Master camera. As I was walking outside, it was swinging around on its cable at the bottom of the tablet, and it glanced upward at the sun for just a split second. And of course, the application soon chewed me out about that, telling me that it had activated the anti-burn protection, and that I should only turn the camera back on and acknowledge that message once the excessive source of infrared energy had been removed. Unfortunately, it looks as though I have damaged the sensor in some way or another. Now, it is still functional. We're looking under hood right now at various things in Naughty Truck's engine compartment. You can see that there's quite a lot of heat in different areas. There are also some things, like the air conditioner filter dryer, if I can get it in frame, that are much cooler than their surroundings because I had the air conditioning on in the hopes of providing a little additional contrast. Now, I could probably make, and maybe I'd even be better advised to make some kind of a screen recording, because as you can see, the reflections from the tablet screen are absolutely atrocious out here. But we'll take a quick look at the options that are offered by the software. If you touch this icon of a thermometer, you can draw points, and when you draw a particular point, it will show you what the temperature is in that area. You can also draw lines, rectangles, circles, make annotations, and change the font and color. You can also delete any points that you have previously established. There are also different color palettes that you can choose from. Right now we're using lava. There's also medical, gold, low light, city, aurora, jungle, rainbow, which is probably the one that most people would use, red hot, Iron Red, which is another common color set. Black Hot, where the hotter areas are darker, such as the roof of my neighbor's garage across the street. Or White Hot, where the hotter an area is, the brighter it is, or the lighter the color. And again, you can see that the roof of my neighbor's garage is quite warm. So let's go ahead and point these cameras at a few things under hood on Naughty Truck and just see how they compare to one another. 
There are also options within the software that allow you to take still pictures. You can combine the thermal image with the picture from your device's own built-in camera, and then finally you can also adjust various settings such as the units of temperature that are in use. In my first comparison I went ahead and I took a picture of the alternator on the truck's engine because that would be one of the hotter locations. And it's here that I noticed when I turned on one of the overlay markers that it was not actually saved in the still picture that it took. Now if you do the same thing with the Kaiwitz imager, it will save the markers on the captured picture. And as far as accuracy and comparability of measurements is concerned, the two do seem quite close to one another. I'm measuring temperatures in the range of 107 to 121 degrees Fahrenheit and both cameras report roughly the same readings in the same areas. I'll go ahead and include pictures captured from both devices in the finished video before we go on to the next segment. And now we're looking inside a freezer that's full of chili food items. First I'll bring the um, Thermal Master camera into view here so you can see what it looks like. We'll go ahead and we'll put out a marker point just to see what the temperature of one of those tomatoes happens to be. It's reporting that as around 28 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit or so. So we'll bring up the Kaiwitz and let it do the same thing. The Kaiwitz definitely indicates that the tomatoes are colder than the Thermal Master does. We'll go ahead and take a picture of that with the Kaiwitz, and then we'll do the same thing with the Thermal Master. I'll also go ahead and show you what the hybridized view looks like with the tablet's camera appearing up here. If I wasn't covering it with my hand, it's a bit of a ballet to be honest with this camera tethered on a stalk as it is and of course trying to operate two thermal cameras at once to keep everything framed appropriately. You can adjust the opacity of the visible light camera from nearly nothing all the way up to a hundred percent. And if you can get the two aligned much better than I have here that might actually be a very useful function. Now of course it is also possible as previously mentioned to not only take a still picture but also to make a small movie and it actually offers to let us record audio so my guess is that there will probably be some audio in this clip. Let's go ahead and stop recording and we'll see how that turned out in the next section. Record audio so my guess is that there will probably be some audio in this clip. Let's go ahead and stop What you're looking at right now is the evaporator coil inside an old freezer. It's been running for a couple of minutes now. Let's go ahead and bring in the Thermal Master camera along with the secondary camera view using the tablet's built-in camera. And we'll go ahead and establish another point of measurement here just to see what it reports. It is presently reporting about 44 degrees or thereabouts. I would actually expect that it is a little that it would be a little colder than that, but the temperature reported is fast going down. It also appears, thankfully, that the image sensor has forgiven me for the stress that I exposed it to earlier. Let's go ahead and get the Kaiwitz in here and see what it says. It's reporting about 39 degrees, 40 degrees, depending upon exactly where it is aimed. We'll go ahead and we'll get a still picture from it. And then I will do the same for the Thermal Master camera. Now you may have noticed it paused for just a moment there. That's because every now and again it needs to recalibrate in order to measure accurately. So we'll try and get everything in the right proportion and relationship to one another and then we'll go ahead and save another picture.
Before I go ahead and show you what the heat image from this condenser coil on the back of the old refrigerator looks like, I'd like to take a moment and share with you the solution that I came up with to keep the camera in place on the tablet case because I don't happen to be blessed with 800 pairs of different hands and it was certainly awkward to try and manage this for every shot in this video. Yes, that's adhesive tape stuck to the case of the tablet. Don't laugh because if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. Although that roll of tape was definitely far past its prime. Now I'm actually shooting this video, this portion of the video, for the second time because as it happens, when I tried to shoot this at first and set up a measurement point up here at the top corner of the screen, it didn't actually display a temperature and I'm not entirely sure why. But now it is doing so. We can definitely see that there is a fair amount of heat in many of the loops of that condenser coil. The closer to the bottom you get, the cooler it gets. And then we see, of course, that the refrigeration compressor itself also is emitting a fair bit of heat because it's been plugged in now for about half an hour or so. So we'll take the measurement point that I set up around the middle of the screen and we'll try to align it with one of those condenser coil loops and we're getting a temperature of around 100 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Now let's do the same thing with the Kiwitz and see what kind of result we get. And again, it is very much the same. The loop that I'm measuring, which is pretty close to the one I just measured with the Thermal Master, is right around 100 degrees when I can zero in on it. We'll go ahead and get a picture of that with the Kiwitz. And we'll also get a picture of it with the Thermal Master as well. Well folks, at this point it's time to go ahead and close up this comparison of the Thermal Master Infrared Camera to the Kiwitz Handheld Thermal Infrared Imaging Camera. I'll be honest with you, and this is in no way a slight of the Thermal Master product, it does work well, but I prefer the form factor of the Kiwitz and other handheld thermal imaging cameras. That said, the Thermal Master certainly does have some advantages. For example, as previously noted, if you were to put it on the end of a USB-C extension cable, you could put it inside something and record imagery in that way. I did notice a few minor software issues with the Thermal Master camera. The most common was a failure of the camera to produce an image after loading the application. Every time that this happened, I was able to fix it by simply disconnecting the camera for a moment and plugging it in again. And it's entirely possible by the time you're watching this video comparison that Thermal Master will have issued an update to their software and addressed that issue. I did notice on one occasion that the pointers and their corresponding temperature indication failed to show up while I was shooting a portion of this video. This, of course, is intended to have been a quick overview, and there are certainly things that I didn't mention about the functionality of the software. One of those is the emissivity control. You might need to adjust this depending upon what you're measuring and how reflective it happens to be. Thermal Master does provide a quick guide in the manual to some suggested settings for certain types of materials. Of course, I'm also not perfect. I'm only human. I make mistakes. Sometimes I make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes I hit every rung on the ladder of fail as I fall down it. It's just one of those things that happens. That's why I always say at the end of every video, I'm always interested in hearing your constructive commentary, your criticisms, those sorts of things. If you think I got it wrong, if you think I missed something, 
I view my video making activities as a two-way dialogue, very much a group effort sort of a thing. And that's why I'm always interested in people's constructive viewpoints. So if I missed something, if I got something wrong, by all means, let's have a nice, open, detailed dialogue about it. Please don't be a drive-by jerk, because the only thing I'm going to do in that case is delete your comment. And if I'm really in a bad mood, I'm going to block you from making any future comments on my videos. And this will happen without warning. So don't even try it. Don't even test the waters. If you are interested in buying one of these cameras, I have some links down in the video description. Full disclosure, these are affiliate and yes, they are tracking links. Although I do not receive any monetary benefit from your following them, that kind of thing doesn't always sit well with me, but the folks at Thermal Master did make it a condition of my receiving product for review in spite of my objections. So please take that into account if you think you might like to purchase one of these cameras and consider how you want to go about getting one if having your browsing habits tracked by this or any other company, not that that isn't hardly commonplace in this day and age, might be of some concern to you. And as always, of course, thanks for watching. I hope that this product comparison was in some way useful to you and that it has given you more information than you had about this Thermal Master infrared imaging camera. As always, I am certainly interested in hearing your constructive commentary.